In this video I'm going to look at redox and half equations. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to write half equations when you know the reactants and products and once we've written the half equations how do you then combine them to create the overall redox equation for the reaction. First thing we'll do though is we'll start with some definitions to do with this topic. So a redox reaction is one which involves reduction and oxidation. Reduction is defined as a decrease in oxidation number or a gain of electrons. Oxidation is an increase in oxidation number or a loss of electrons. A reducing agent is an electron donor and it's worth mentioning also that the reducing agent gets oxidized in the process and an oxidizing agent is an electron acceptor and it gets reduced in the process. So we'll have a look at writing a half equation. Probably best to explain what a half equation is at this point. So we've talked about redox equations being those that involve a reduction process and an oxidation process but all a half equation is is half of that story so it's either the reduction process on its own or the oxidation process on its own so we've got some information on the board here write the half equation for the reduction so it's the reduction process of the vo2 plus ion to v3 plus and this is carried out in acidic solution. Now the important thing to mention is that you will always be told what the reactant is and what your product is. And all you have to do is turn that into a half equation. So the first thing we need to do is we need to write down what we know. So we know that the VO 2 plus ion is going to be turned into the V3 plus ion. We then have to follow some rules. If you follow the rules to the letter, you won't ever get these wrong. So, what's rule number one? Rule number one is balance the atoms. So you can see that we've got one V there 1v there so the v's are sorted 1o there we haven't got any o's here so we need some oxygen next thing to appreciate is what are you allowed to use to balance half equations to balance the atoms in half equations and you're only allowed to use a small number of substances and one of them is water so Water will help us to sort out this oxygen problem. So you can see now we have an oxygen here and an oxygen here. So you're not allowed to use O2. It must be water. That's your only option for oxygen. We've introduced a second problem because we've introduced hydrogen into the equation. The other substance that you're allowed to use is the H plus ion. So we're going to use H plus ions to sort out these hydrogens. So we're going to put two H plus ions here. Once you've balanced the atoms, the next thing we have to do is balance for charge. So we'll look at the charges on the left hand side and compare them with the charges on the right hand side. And what we have to do is make sure that the charges are identical on either side of the arrow. So what's the charge on the left at the moment? It is 2 plus plus 2 plus, so it's 4 plus. What's the charge on the right? 3 plus plus no charge, so it's obviously 3 plus. So those charges don't balance. The only thing that you can use to balance charge is electrons. So we now need to ask ourselves where do the electrons need to go and how many do we need? If you think about 
electrons going on this side, adding anything negative to this 3 plus is just going to make this more, sorry, less positive, more negative. So the electrons aren't going to go on that side, they're going to go on this side. How many electrons do we need to bring 4 plus down to 3 plus so that they balance? Well, it's 1, isn't it? So we need 1 electron on the left. So what we've got here is the half equation now for the reduction of the VO2 plus ion to V3 plus and you can see these H plus ions back up the fact that it's in an acidic solution. I also want to mention the link between the number of electrons in the half equation and the change in oxidation number. So we'll work out the oxidation state of vanadium. So we've got vanadium with oxygen with a 2 plus charge. So let's have a think about what the oxidation number is of this V here. So oxygen has a 2 minus oxidation number. Now we've got a charge on the ion of 2 plus. So the positive charge that's coming from this vanadium to give this 2 plus charge must be plus 4. So 4 plus with 2 minus leaves 2 plus. So we've got a plus 4 oxidation state here, and this ion is obviously plus 3. The oxidation number of a simple ion like this is just the um, whatever the charge is. So you can see that the change in oxidation number is 1. How many electrons have we used in the half equation? 1. So these are always the same. The number of electrons always equals the change in the oxidation number. You can see also how the, this half equation backs up the definition for reduction. So reduction is defined as the gain of electrons. Well, there's the gain of one electron there. And it's also defined as the um, lowering or decrease in oxidation number, plus 4 to plus 3. So we look at another one now. This is a little bit more difficult than the first one. So we've got to write the half equation for the reduction of the dichromate 6 ion, so that's Cr2O7 2 minus. It's the ion that you find in acidified potassium dichromate, which is used as the oxidizing agent for alcohols. So the half equation for the reduction of this ion to the Cr3 plus ion in acidic solution. So again, we have been told what the reactant is and what the product is. So that's our starting point for the half equation. We are turning Cr2O7, 2 minus, leaving some space for the, um, the other things that we're going to need to make the equation work. And we're going to turn that into Cr3 plus. So I've just, whatever I've underlined there, that's the beginning of our equation, our half equation. So remember, the first thing we'll have to do is balance the atoms. Well, straight away you can see Cr2, but only Cr there, so we need a 2 in front of that. Seven oxygens. What can we use to sort oxygens out? Well, it's water, so we need seven waters. And that's introduced 14 Hs, so we need 14 H pluses on the left-hand side. So the atoms now all balance. We'll now look at the charge, so work out the charge on the left. 2 minus with 14 plus leaves 12 plus, and 2 times 3 plus is 6 plus. So how many electrons are we going to need? Well, it's obviously 6. A quick look at the oxidation numbers now. So. Two chromiums, seven oxygens, two minus charge. So seven oxygens would be 14 minus. So we've got the two minus charge left over. So how much positive charge do we need to couple with 14 minus to leave two minus? Well, it's obviously 12 plus. 
There's two chromiums having to provide 12 plus, so each one is obviously plus 6. Remember, oxidation number is all about the individual atom. And then we've got simple ion here, 3 plus, so it's obviously just plus 3. We've got a change of plus 6 to plus 3, so that's a reduction process. Three electrons, or sorry, a drop of three. Now there's two chromiums. This is happening to two chromiums. So each one needs three electrons. And that's where that six comes from. Another classic one is the MnO4- ion being turned into the Mn2 plus ion. Again, it's in acidic solution. So we'll quickly rattle this one off. So it's MnO4- minus turning into Mn2+, 1Mn each, that's fine, 4 oxygens, so we need 4 waters, that's introduced 8 hydrogens, so we need 8 H pluses here, so the atoms are all balanced now, let's do the charge, 1 minus with 8 plus leaves 7 plus, 2 plus, so how do you bring 7 plus down to 2 plus, you obviously need 5 electrons. The oxidation number of the manganese in this ion, well, 4 O's is 8 minus. What do we need to leave a 1 minus charge? It's obviously plus 7. So that's why this ion is called the manganate 7 ion. And it's going down to plus 2. So it's being reduced. It's, um, it's dropping its oxidation number. It's, the re oxidation number is decreasing. So... How many electrons do you need to go from plus 7 to plus 2? You need 5. We'll do some more. So here's another one. Hydrogen sulfide to sulfur. What's the half equation? H2S to S. Sulfurs are sorted. Hydrogens aren't sorted. So you might be thinking, well, we'll put water in there. Well, yes, that would sort out the hydrogen, but it would introduce oxygen in the equation. So the best thing to do is just to put two H pluses in there. So there's all the atoms balanced. The charge, we've got no charge on this side. We've got a two plus charge on this side. So we obviously need two electrons here and that will make the charges zero on either side. Let's look at the oxidation number of sulfur. So we've got two hydrogens plus one each. So it's plus two from those two hydrogens. So this is obviously minus 2 to keep the whole thing 0 neutral. Elements are always 0 and so we've changed, the oxidation number's changed by 2 and there's the two electrons needed for that. The oxidation number has increased so this is an oxidation process and oxidation is loss of electrons so the electrons effectively have been lost from this and there they are over there. H2SO4, so sulfuric acid to H2S, hydrogen sulfide. So write down what we know, leave some room for what we need to work out. So we've got two hydrogens, that's fine so far, sulfur sorted right, four oxygens. So best thing to do would be four waters here. Now we've already established that they're, this, they're, they're equal, so these are the new hydrogens, so it's obviously going to be 8H plus on this side. So all the atoms are balanced. Let's look at the charge. So we've got 0, 8 plus, so it's plus 8 on that side. We've got no charge on this side, so we obviously need 8 electrons on this side. 